That's fine. Don't know why they're singing the Darth Vader song. Welcome to the Afterthoughts podcast. As they say, hmm, what do they say? The most wonderful time of, of year. The agree year. or disagree? I yes agree. or true? <laughs> true, or yes. That is true. Uh, yes, yes and no. Okay, why Tell no? Why yes? Well, or why no? I'll do no, and he can do yes. Okay, okay. It's cold. <laughs> it's not that cold here. Yeah, it's not that cold. I'm I actually, a, I actually love the cold, and okay. so I don't even know why I said that. I panicked. <laughs> Start it over. Run it back. <laughs> Doug, why yes? Uh, it's Christmas time, man. Yeah. yeah. It's Jesus' birthday. Yeah. Yes. Christmas lights are awesome. Yes. Do you have Christmas lights on your house? Yeah. And sure all, do. Put them up. With, oh, yeah. Put them up last e. week and almost died. Okay. No, not are really. Are you okay? But Exaggeration. Being up 26 feet on a ladder when Scary. it's windy. I do not like that. Oh, that's a smart. bad feeling, man. The I'm whole time. Any of you guys scared of heights? I have a heights kind of. Slightly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I actually love them. Yeah, Whoa. that's... That's which is kind of like snakes, which is kind of bad. It's probably bad. <laughs> I can see someone, snakes too. Last night someone showed us snakes. a picture of a two headed snake and I have not liked a picture oh. of less in a long time. Let's that put that up. Very bad. <laughs> uh, Kayla, it's the most wonderful time of year. Yes or true? I like it. I like fall and then, oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Keep going. Oh, yes. You like I fall. like Christmas. You like Christmas. I like just being cold and chilly, yeah. getting some hot cocoa, yeah. watching movies. Yeah. It's just perfect. Here's my thing with that is I love hot coffee. It's my favorite thing in the world. That's hot coffee. That's I'm the I'm the guy who drinks hot coffee in July in Austin yeah. when it's like 110 out and everyone's drinking iced coffee just because I love it. And yeah. so part of the the amazing part of December is I can have hot coffee yes. and nobody's judging me. Uh, you're... You're a big coffee guy. Big coffee What's connoisseur. What's your go-to go coffee drink? I don't know a lot about coffee. I can't handle coffee because it makes me anxious. <laughs> Tell um, us the story. <laughs> very <laughs> pathetic when it comes to caffeine, we unfortunately. Were, we were I hanging like the out. taste of creamer, so I like coffee yeah. sometimes. Man, well, imagine if it was spicy <laughs> coffee. Handle, I would be dead. No, oh, you'd dude. be dead in a can't second. handle spicy food. You would no. be done. No. Years ago, we were hanging out, and we, we were about to go. We had just we were in Austin to scout the city and go um, look around. And you had a cup of coffee. Oh yeah, I made you oh, a cup yeah. of coffee in the morning. About. Yeah. And for the next like two hours, Ethan was just it's running around the Airbnb, like making us all sandwiches. Yeah. And, like, I made I made like things. twenty sandwiches. <laughs> it's like, dude, you just had a cup of coffee. Yeah. What's, it's something about caffeine. What's wrong with you? I don't know. <laughs> don't. Uh, but <laughs> as I love a, a good. What do, you, what do you drink? I love a good americano. And that's just it's espresso. Mm -hmm. Which sometimes I'll just get an espresso and sip on that. And that's just coffee is, beans. Which is nice. Yep. Just and then with an Americano, they add hot water if it's hot. Wait, pretty, is there a pretty between... bitter tasting. Yeah. Very but bitter. you you genuinely like that. Yeah, I do. And the thing for me is I'll always be like at the coffee shop writing for a few hours. And so I want something that I can sip on over the course of time instead. Like if I get like a latte, yeah. I'm, I'm going to drink it in 20 minutes. Down the hatch. You know? So, oh, yeah. So I like the, the coffee I like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's not yeah. coffee. No, Do you no, drink no. coffee? Um, a little bit. Probably about a, maybe like a cup a day. Hmm. Maybe. But hmm. it makes me, it jittery. makes me jittery too, yeah. Man. Yeah, man. So probably, I'm actually trying to not drink it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. it also tears up my does stomach have, a little does bit. Does it have health benefits other than getting you fired up to right yeah man tons of health benefits. Okay. i don't know <laughs> i hope so you drink coffee i don't know well i have a question doug is your water caffeine Did caffeine water yeah yes yeah caffeine water is, oh this is one of our sponsors caffeine yeah, caffeine water caffeine, caffeine water yeah i saw this at the what? uh the grocery store this morning okay because i was thirsty and i went in to get a bottle of water and this was on the shelf i was like i'll try this instead of coffee today because it's 40 milligrams of natural coffee. Mm. Coffee's natural. What? Or it's 40 milligrams <laughs> of natural caffeine, oh, not coffee. Yeah, water is this. Yeah. Here's a question. Sure. What is caffeine? Uh, a stimulant. How, what, ma what makes it? Where does it come from? <laughs> like, coffee beans. <laughs> <laughs> and espresso beans. Aren't espresso beans different from coffee beans? How, like, how do you get caffeine into a Red Bull? What are you doing there? What are you injecting into that water, carbonated water mix? 
Anybody uh, out there? Uh, <laughs> what is it? You're, I don't, I don't uh, you're, you're, let us know. That's tough, man, because yeah, you're kind of asking, how do you make Red Bull? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not a short answer. No. <laughs> well, yeah, I would love to hear an answer. Next week, we'll have an answer for you. Next week. Yeah. Is caffeine real? That's a good question. Maybe that's oh. the title of this episode. Oh. Episode oh. 18, by the way. Uh, wow. See, Manning. see Andrew Manning. Huberman's Payton. episode on caffeine does he explain what it is he does and yeah. how it is and, it's, and why it and is why it is why is and it's not great for you turns out which is a bummer oh, so it's a no <laughs> on the health benefit side um i'm sure it's like anything there's there's both sides yeah it's like Other, they say yeah. having a glass of red wine is good for you because of the antioxidants <laughs> right. however it it's not it's better good to for have you. that glass than to not have that <laughs> glass. Have a cup of water yeah, yeah. and get the antioxidants <laughs> yeah. somewhere else right. and not have the alcohol <laughs> Same yeah. concept because Dude, that's caffeine's like, the same thing. That's like the logic of, well, it was on sale, so I bought it, so I saved money. Yeah. It's like, well, actually, the way to save money is to not buy it at all. <laughs> yeah. Right. Girl math. Uh, girl math. Girl math. girl math. Girl math. That's girl math. Whoa, Thank whoa, you. Thank whoa. That's not. Oh. No. <laughs> um, stop that in its tracks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Couple sports updates. Yep. Broncos won. They're only one game behind the Chiefs, who lost in heartbreaking fashion. Oh, it was man. brutal. And I that just couldn't be happier. <laughs> so great, man. Watching Patrick Mahomes lose his mind was like music to my soul as a Broncos mm. fan. But it was a really crushing way to lose sure. a game. Sure. Yeah. Crushing way to lose a game. Yeah. I've watched a lot of content about yeah. that. Yeah, people are... There's yeah. a lot going on there. And pretty much everybody has said... No, nope, it was. I mean, clearly, he was offside. By about it was six a penalty. Inches. It was, and it's Did been called refs? twelve times this year. Offensive offside right. has been called yeah. been called twelve times this year, two times last year, one time the year before. But it is something that now you got to coach your players on. Some, it's the new somebody thing. Somebody said though that Kadarius Tony was. He did that like five times in that game. Really, Ooh, and yeah. it was only called that last time, Dude, which I, was and that play by Travis Kelsey who. I've mentioned it's not my favorite football player, but he's a Hall of Fame. Pretty awesome. He's a oh, Hall of Fame yeah. tight end, and he made a Hall of Fame play. Kayla, if and Travis Kelsey and Taylor <laughs> Swift are they a real couple? Yeah. Do we know they they like yeah. legitimately are dating? Yeah. Okay. If they yeah. get married, does he take her name since she's more famous? Uh, I don't. I don't think they'll keep each other's last name. I think that no. They both but let's just say that's have... not an option. <laughs> <laughs> Afterthoughts rules. Afterthoughts rules. Uh, Travis Swift. Yeah. Uh, I or, could see him giving into that. Sure, why not? I think that Taylor Swift has a lot of power, and I can see. <laughs> yeah, that's probably I'll true. Say. Is Swift her real last name? I don't know. Because it's a really cool last name. That is a cool so name. That's why I always There's wondered. A player, is that, I'm not a Swiftie, Swift. oh, yeah. so I don't know. I know how some singers like change their names the all the time. Yeah, I think you know? it is yeah. Taylor Swift. Because Perry's not Katy Perry's last name. Oh really? What? I, I'm just saying that with confidence. Oh, yeah, I think that's true. We're making a lot of statements on the show. Brad Pitt's name is not Brad Pitt. It's not. No. I don't what know what his it? name is, but, or oh. if it was. But. <laughs> My last name's not really Weckenman. Yeah, when you oh. became a it's pastor, you changed cool, it. super cool, so I changed it to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, well, no, 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 it is Weckenman. <laughs> if I'm going to be a pastor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, I need a name that's really hard to spell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like I had a legitimate thing I was going to bring up at the intro here, but we're, we're beyond dude, it now. We made so many caffeine, ridiculous... Really, <laughs> caffeine took us. That we know nothing about yeah. in the first eight yeah. minutes of this episode. All we've established, caffeine makes you swift at everything. Oh, nice. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but yeah, speaking of my fantasy team, I did make the playoffs. Congratulations, I had man. to win the last two weeks. Wow. And now I have a rematch of my game I just won against our dear friend Zach Johnson. Big game this weekend. Big shout out to Zach. I'm cheering first, for Zach. First for my team and Zach. He's a great guy. Yeah, that's I that's kind win. of a win-win if you think about it that yeah, way. Yeah, but not for me. It, yeah. be a or you could see it as a lose-lose. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see it as a win-lose. Either <laughs> I win or I lose. That's how it works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's usually... But that's exciting. Um... Anyway, so <laughs> off to a good start here at the Peyton Manning episode. Can only Caleb, go up. Caleb, we can only go up from here, guys. <laughs> yeah, Caleb mentioned this is episode 18, nine minutes. which means this podcast is now an adult. It's yeah. 18. Wow. 18. So yeah, this, this podcast can vote. Can buy cigarettes? Oh, you shouldn't, though. Oh, no, no, no. Another just thing because people used to say. What is nicotine? doesn't mean you should. <laughs> I don't Explain know. It. Should we get into that? <laughs> That's like a thing that I think if you really boil it down, there's most things in the world, none of us really know what anything is. Yeah. We're just like... Yeah, that's what that is. But I couldn't tell you what why. What did you say this weekend? It's like Wi-Fi. Nobody understands the internet. Nobody understands that. No. Nobody. What, what is Bluetooth? it? Where is it? Bluetooth. And then anytime someone's <laughs> like, oh, I can explain the internet. And then they start to, they're like, mm, you're yeah, like, oh, wait a second. That didn't make any sense yeah. to me. So anyway, 
Uh, good time for questions with Kayla, I think. Yes. <laughs> yes. Since we're not doing questions today, we're doing a oh. game. Wow. What? what a surprise. Thank you. Switch yes. <laughs> yes. Game we got a game. I'm tired of my okay, questions. Go. So this is basically going to be a game where I'm going to read you guys some Gen Z slang. I'll use it in a sentence, and you guys have to like try and like decipher what that okay. Might mean. What does I like the it. word mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I have ten. We got this. Ten. Um, <laughs> we're gonna be good. We've got it. Yeah. yeah. We're hip. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm wearing oh, a hoodie. Yeah, dude. I'll first oh, ask. You are. <laughs> I'll first yeah, just say the word, chill, and man. you guys can try and guess. If you need the sentence, I can give it in a sentence. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. It's like Speaking a meaning of, bee. Per. Per. P u r r r. Per. Three R's. Yeah. I don't like mm-hmm. this. I know. I my first thought was like per our conversation. Yeah, like, no, but that's like according, according to our conversation. Or a cat per is, is that what Gen Z per hour? Hour? <laughs> 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 Like um, a like a Tesla plaid goes from zero to sixty miles per hour in one point yeah. nine seconds. Yeah. Is that your sentence? I'm gonna Here's say the sentence. Oh, sentence. Go I need this. Oh, you take a guess. I'm gonna say it's a shorthand way to say perfume. Oh. That's good. Did guess. I get it? I'm gonna nope. guess. Then ah. that gives me the idea of perfect. Okay. Dude, perfect. Close-ish, not really. That's, okay. But <laughs> YouTube, YouTube That's just announced that perfect. the Afterthoughts is the top podcast ever. In your response, you would say per. <laughs> That's not using it in a sentence. <laughs> That's a one-word yeah. sentence. <laughs> Okay, it means That's great. That's like saying great. Gen Zers say per, <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> okay, great. You, your this, sentence is one is, word, so I had to give you like a sentence. Before. If you want to know what this word means, you can Google per. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is it, is it, okay, can I guess? Yeah. Like no way, not a chance. Yeah, it's like a not approval, a like. You're expressing oh, like approval, like, like yeah, right. That's of course. So sick. Oh, I can't so, believe oh. it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Per. Or like I can promise I'll never I'll, say that. I won't use that good. one. Okay. Yeah, Number that's two. a good one to not use. Um, I feel like a more common one. It's <laughs> a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, Done. Yeah. Uh, so these two, I'm going to, there's two, but they mean oh, the no. same thing. So. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> that's a good one to not use. <laughs> that's so well said. That's such a, that's a great picture, way to say she's that. She's picturing one of us trying to yeah. use that. Like embarrassing that was her polite way of saying, go ahead and don't, don't say that. Yeah. You're in your mid I'll use it in a sentence. It would be better if Ethan did not say purr. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> purr. Yeah. Did I use that right? Better yeah, that was for good. everybody. That was good. That was great. Okay. okay. I feel like it's just shorthand for perfect. All right, we can move on. Okay. <laughs> All right. I don't like so it. number two. These are two different things. So there's one that's slay. I feel like you guys may have heard that one, slay. And then slay. Hmm? there's another thing that uses this, it means the same Violent. thing. Eight and left no crumbs. Eight and the left no crumbs. Yes. So here's my sentence. <laughs> what? <laughs> Those two things mean. Wait, can I? <laughs> Go can ahead. I? Can Dude, I guess before slay. the sentence? Or yeah. should I say that's eight with no crumbs? <laughs> Dude, how was dinner? <laughs> Dude, ate it all, left no crumbs. <laughs> slay. slay. <laughs> It's like saying I crushed tomato, it. Tomato, tomato. You what? I crushed it. Yeah, that's pretty good. I ate and left no crumbs. Yeah, yeah. That's very yeah. Slay. I gotta like it. Yeah. Slay. Well, is that is like, that right or no? It's not like slaying, as in like you slayed a dragon. Right. No. no. Not no. like Santa slay just like, either. Not just like, like saying I crushed it. It's not like <laughs> it I crushed so it. Was like, yes. Yes. <laughs> Correct. I crushed that task. Right. Yeah. So I left well. no crumbs. So next time one of you guys preaches, I'll say, dude, ate it and left no crumbs. Yeah, yeah that's man. kind of it. Yep, I'm yeah. not going to do that. No cap. No that lies. No, yeah, no joke. Yeah, no, good. Heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, sus. Sustenance. Sus. <laughs> that's filling. Filling. No. Ah. I think it's going to, I think it means suspect. Like that. I think we're putting too much logic to this. <laughs> you want Without the sentence? sense? Yeah. I have a good sentence. Yeah, yeah, sentence. Okay. Don't you think Eric is a little sus to be our kid's pastor? Suspect is that would make yeah. sense. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. So, wow, dude. Call me out about Suspicious. logic. Turns out logic right. wins. Turns out Gen Z is. To logical. answer your question, <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Only because tea. of his mullet. What about tea? T E A. I, I, so do, I do, do like to drink tea. A substitute also, to coffee. So back also, to caffeine. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah, yeah, Less yeah. caffeine and tea, yeah. and that's why I do drink tea. Yeah, good. Uh, I heard Patrick Mahomes yelled at his teammate. What's the tea? The, what's, what's the, the problem? Deal? 
what's like the news? What's the gossip? Oh. What's the four one one? The morning tea. Yes. The morning tea. Yeah. yeah, that's what we should have called this podcast. The morning, the morning uh, change tea. Change the sign. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes breaks down. <laughs> what's the, the tea? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the way. Oh, he, so, but, still complaining about it to Josh Allen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> can't do that. All right, Stan. S T A N. That's an Eminem song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I With, remember yep. it from fifth grade, probably. Stan. <laughs> Ellen John was in that song. Really? Yeah. No. Yeah. Right? No, Dido. Yeah. Didn't Ellen John sing the chorus? <laughs> There's tea. Is that there, my tea's gone cold? I'm wondering why I got out of bed at all. You know That's what I'm talking Di about? Dido. What's it her is. Name? And also T. <laughs> and also T E A. My tea's gone cold. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Ellen Great John. That's, That's, that one's a little What sus. was the question? <laughs> that is. We're on her. Stan. I still don't know what that one was. Stan? Yeah. yeah. Use it in a sentence. Yeah, okay. Stan could literally mean anything. Here at Red Rocks, we stand the Broncos. St we stand the Broncos? Yeah. Love? We support. Support. I wonder where mm. that one came from. <laughs> the stands. Can we get the You're origin? The stands. The rooting for your team. <laughs> yeah. The Stan uh, Hill song. I, I stand this <laughs> podcast. So I'll yeah. stand <laughs> with arms yeah. You should do a remix. <laughs> Ryan, Sending me. What? Sending me. Oh, from Isaiah. Here am I. Yeah, send yeah. Me. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Send me. Good. Use That's it in sending. a sentence, please. The Afterthoughts podcast is sending me. Oh. <laughs> like, it's, it's changing my life. <laughs> it's, yeah. the best, it's, the, it's the biggest number podcast one on podcast YouTube, in right? the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's the most important piece of media <laughs> in, <laughs> in this time, in this year. Is all I need. <laughs> no. No. It's, it's just. It's just making <laughs> me laugh. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes. It it's the funniest podcast. Yeah. Yeah. It's sending me. Yeah. Yes. All right. I'm going to use that. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't see you guys using that. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> yeah, you should, though. Not yeah. yeah. <laughs> it would be natural for you to use it. Yeah. <laughs> I think you as might know this, as this one. Caffeine. How are we doing so far? We're almost done. Caffeine water, man. I can't get over that. That's um, crazy. Dank. I don't see any in it. I think you guys might know that one. Dank. dank? Yeah. Like dope. Like that's good. Yeah. You're very good. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. What about we went serve? To Sue Boulder. Yeah. Well, well, like, like serve. Like yeah, so we our serve team. So we have parking team, <laughs> cafe team, greeting team. Like you just got different served. ways. Is to that serve? the same or is no, it different? It's okay. different. Facilities team, favorite mm -hmm. team. Use it uh, in a sentence, please. John the Baptist camel hair clothes are serving New York City Fashion Week. Really, I didn't know that. Is that a headline? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that he's not still uh, with us. Yeah. <laughs> um, serving like yeah. setting the tone. Are, are trendy. <laughs> Kind of like looking good. Looking good. Yeah. Okay. Serve? Yeah. Serves Served, a, serving, served. Like, dude, Jacob, yeah. that hat serves, dude. Can I, I, is that? All yeah. right, last one. <laughs> yeah, I think okay. you got it. And I didn't know about this one. I mm -hmm. found this one out. Guys, um, we're nine for nine. <laughs> <laughs> Men Gen TV. Experts. Men what? TV? Men TV. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Men, Men TV. TV. Like Men two separate words. Men T and then B. Meant to be. Meant to be, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> like, uh, it should be. Who, who, I know. <laughs> hey, who, who are your mentee be? Like, who are you mentoring? This one. How many mentee bees have the as given? Y'all. <laughs> you get it now? <laughs> that quick. Oh. Wait, what did you say? <laughs> it. You really think that's what it is? <laughs> How would I know? I said, hey, who are your mentee be? Like, who are you mentoring? <laughs> Good Dude, guess. All we're doing it's with this guess. exercise is trying to figure out what it sounds like. <laughs> and then just saying the slightly longer word. <laughs> what? You're is close. It, is also, it, how? To, how am I close? Yeah. Not really. Yeah, you're not close. <laughs> also, it's about who you're mentoring. No. Dude, I'll you're so close. close. You almost had it. Oh, it's like, you're almost who there. Who, who's <laughs> mentoring you? <laughs> Nailed it. It's like a Paul Timothy kind what of a thing. What am I, 16? I know everything about this generation. It Dude. means mental breakdown. <laughs> what, what, Kayla, what's your definition of you're close? I don't know. Pick a number between 1 and 100. 2. You're close. It was 98. <laughs> what? It what? means close as in mental well, breakdown. Ethan's having a menti oh. beat yeah. on the afterthoughts. <laughs> We've had it, so. yeah, that has happened, yeah. especially when you were on the moon. <laughs> you just can't plug that episode. Yeah. So we got nine out of ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah circle back to that I one. Show that to Will and Kinsley, <laughs> yes. and they are positive that I was on the moon. No way, <laughs> dude! So positive, even though you can kind of see your guys' microphones. Yeah. Yeah. They're asking questions about it. 
Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's awesome. I that is it. awesome. A hero in their eyes. At least we know that Will and now. Kinsley get our sense of humor. Yeah, yeah. they're in. That's a good. That's our target audience. <laughs> yeah. Five and two-year-old. Yeah. Uh, Kinsley thinks that. That was fun. That was dang. I, I want to know... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the original, I feel like, well, it's not the original. There's probably been these kinds of things for every generation, but yep. cool mm. is like one of the first words I learned that meant mm. what it means, cool. But like, why yeah, did someone say that? <laughs> that's good. It's likable. It's, uh, you know. Very nice. Yeah. Wonder why. Why did people say that's cool? Yeah. All so right. many so many things for us that we don't know. Caffeine, cool. Yeah. Are y'all considered boomers? Men TB. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> I don't Jeez. know. What? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Baby you, boomers? You do know. That happened fast. Oh, you're close. You're super close. <laughs> yeah. We're millennials, Kayla. <laughs> that got Jacob good. Well, <laughs> Is that well, you're about, are you you're calling us two or three decades away <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. from that? Are you but. calling us boomers? <laughs> you <laughs> either understand what sus means or you're a yeah. baby boomer. No, I'm, I'm like being legit because... No. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, wait, wait. Let me finish. Because... Like Gen Z and like the younger generation, they don't care if like you're actually a boomer. If you don't get it, they'll be like, "Okay, boomer." They'll just call you a boomer no yeah. matter what. Yeah, well, they don't uh, understand. They, say, okay, the, they don't understand the generational oh, yeah. breakdown of the, or, the years. which right. I could do right now. <laughs> yeah, <I'm not> gonna. <laughs> but Our cool to have that in your back pocket. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yep. A lot of numbers, which I can handle because. Oh man, <laughs> got caffeinated water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Per. Per. Is it discolored at all? Is it cloudy or anything? <laughs> How do you know? Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Today. Wow, Kayla, that was great. Pretty Thank harsh, you, Kayla. Educational. Uh, sorry. Jeez. <laughs> Ever since she went after Ethan's apple pie mm. with her seven out of ten, she's become a little bit <laughs> cutthroat on this podcast. Yeah. We need yeah. that. It's yeah. controversy. We need controversy. Yeah, Speaking right. of controversy, that oh. brings up. I was alerted. <laughs> All right. Normally we don't draw attention to stuff like this because it doesn't really matter. But I was alerted by our crew here yes. of a phenomenal <laughs> comment that we got so on great. our last episode. <laughs> so great. <laughs> Kayla, will you read it to, uh, to the panel? Yes. So this is from somebody. All right. So a dude with woman's hair. <laughs> <laughs> Pause there. And three guys in an expensive studio talking about how much money pastors should make. Got it. You don't know what you're talking about. The Bible is extremely clear. You are owed compensation by the body. That compensation is not gra gratuitous. Gra gratuitous. Thank you. Neither part. should you want it to be. You are taking from your brothers and sisters. Wow. Uh, which one of us do you think he was talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the dude with the woman's hair. Mm. I mean, uh, technically, it's not women's hair because it is my own hair. That's not a wig. Hair, yeah. So this is a man's hair. <laughs> Man's hair. Is if it means women's hairstyle, that is fair. Yeah, it is long, like, yeah. but that's also kind of a stereotype. <laughs> Which oh, this is off topic, but <laughs> why do you think people always assume Jesus had long hair? Yeah, it's so <laughs> like true, there's, there's probably not a Bible verse that alludes to that. There is. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Find it for us. Oh, is this an ESV? Oh no, I don't know where it is in there. <laughs> I've, I just thought about that when I, uh, you know, huh? why? was that a cultural thing? At yeah, the time it's a good for, question. Did guys have long hair back then? Typically, like, so, you're, no, probably not, Old you're probably not getting a whole lot of haircuts. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But in the Old yeah, Testament, there were some point. guys with long hair yeah. that the Bible talks about, like Absalom got caught up in a tree by his long hair. Yeah, Samson, Samson had Samson. long hair. Shouldn't have got a haircut. Right. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, back to the comment. Yeah. Um, Rapunzel. A little harsh off the top. <laughs> Rapunzel. <laughs> not sure... <laughs> <laughs> not sure what uh, in Second Kings. Yeah. yeah, not sure what my hair has to do with the conversation about money. <laughs> Felt a little personal, but that's yeah. fine. I did get a good chuckle when I saw that. Oh, that's um, great. Okay, it's funny because it sounded like somebody who wanted to make a genuine critique yeah. Yeah. and make a point, yeah. but immediately just disqualifies themselves by being a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, now now nobody's listening. Right. right, and we could have had a really cool conversation, right, but now right, nobody's right. listening because you just wanted to be mean, which yes. is kind of <laughs> what we were just which talking is the whole about. Point of why I enjoyed that part. <laughs> I did, yeah. yeah. Even okay. though that did yeah. make me smile. Sure. Uh, the point is not to throw whoever this person was under the bus because yeah, there's true. probably some validity to what they're saying. I mean, my hair is long, but also about the other parts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. Uh, the bummer is, I think, and the reason that I wanted to bring this up is, like, how do you respond to and deal with critique mm. and people's opinions? Because in the digital age, 
we all have the luxury to spout off and say whatever we want. There's no accountability. Sure. Yeah. The bummer is if that person came here and sat in this room yeah. and had that same conversation, obviously didn't listen to the whole conversation because right. the whole point was not that we're trying to <laughs> make a bunch of money or be gratuitous. We were asking no. the question of like, what's the line? Because a lot of things have gotten out of hand with pastors and money. But if they sat in here, they would also realize it's not an expensive podcast. No, it's, there's there's literally, no ceiling on there's this. No ceiling. this is this literally is my office. office. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like just I work a right there table in. all throughout the week. <laughs> <laughs> right here where I'm sitting. Yeah, dude. <laughs> our cameras, our cameras are hidden by two desks. <laughs> no, we have hand-me-down cameras from our Denver locations. Yeah. Jacob built this wooden wall right I here. I stole the sign. That's oh. right. You stole the sign. <laughs> right. <laughs> all of that to say. <laughs> The bummer is if that person came in here and sat down, we'd have a great conversation. Oh, for they sure. Would, they would probably have some really good, yeah, like totally. biblically, here's what the Bible says about, you know, yeah, the church yeah. does mm -hmm. support the pastor and that's biblically a part of this, but also it's not meant to be gratuitous and get taken out of hand, which was the point of our conversation. Yeah. Right. Um, I think normally you just take the high road and you don't really need to respond to any of that. And we're not doing that to... We, can, we should actually delete that so mm -hmm. nobody goes and finds that person's profile and feels yes. like they need to say anything. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but a lot of people don't get called out and kind of, I think, need to in this day and age. Yeah. You know, like people just spout off and spout off and spout off. Right. And there needs to be some feedback sometimes. How do you, how do you guys navigate that? Cause, and tell stories also of, we've all gotten critique and feedback <laughs> over the years. <laughs> well, I pretty harsh stuff. I haven't yet. <laughs> how have you navigated and responded to that stuff? Um, That's a great question, man. Yeah, because I do like that. The um, like the free reign of critiquers in comment sections, yeah, behind a screen, not face to face is causing a lot of pain, insecurity, anxiety, depression, trauma, yeah. a lot of negativity. Yeah. And there's no there's nothing to control it. Yeah. Right. And you're right, there's not really critique for critiquers. Right. How do you critique the style of critiquing? Right. Because whoever commented that, and maybe I'll, I'll say, I think I called him a jerk just like three minutes ago. That's probably not even true of who they are. Right. But the comment that that sentence was a very that was a, just a mean thing just to say. Shot, right. It's like my son Will um, like snatched something from Kinsley, his sister, yesterday, mm -hmm. and I pulled him aside and I said, "Buddy, that was that was not kind, and you are kind. Right. You are kind. You yeah. just weren't acting like it right Good. now." Yep. I think the same thing's true. You are a good per you are a kind person yeah. who's capable of having very yeah. beneficial, mm. creative, and fruitful conversations. You're just not acting like it in that moment because right. you're emotional and right. you're not face to face. And yeah. that removes the human aspect of it. Yeah. Mm. Does that make yes. sense? Yes. Yeah, it's like there's the identity and then the behavior. And what's happening is we're getting so caught up in all the behavior because the behavior is saying mean things online, mm -hmm. which makes another person say a mean thing back and then it turns into this like ping pong match yeah. back and forth and you're really just talking about behavior instead of yeah. digging down deeper to go hey who actually are we what's our identity um, right. you actually will you are a kind person how yeah. do you start to act like it and i want to reaffirm that so i don't see a whole lot of that digging happening mm -hmm. when it's via comments on youtube right. or instagram or whatever um and so that's the question I'm always thinking is, yeah. is what, like, who's the person underneath the question? What's the question underneath the question? Where's the pain point there? Yeah. Um, I've, I've learned to uh, separate it into three categories. Um, nice. Uh, I didn't come up with this, uh, but it might be helpful for somebody is anytime you get critique, I go, okay, there's trolls, there's critics and there's friends mm. and it's way too oversimplified, but for the sake of ease, trolls, critics, friends. And so the first category is, uh, I would say a troll is just someone that's just trying to start chaos. Right. It's the Joker from, from yeah. the dark Knight, yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Um, and for trolls, I've learned to just not even play the game, not even go down yeah, to that don't level. Feed the bears. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually, and this is important to say, um, a lot of the, the comments that look like trolls, aren't even real people. It's, it's, it's AI, which this is like a, a evil thing and, yeah. and whatever, but yes. uh, there's, there's bots that are, are programmed just to just stir, stir up, up controversy, which is crazy yeah. and a whole other conversation. That's cool. Thanks for everyone behind that. Yep. Yep. Jeez. But also important to know that when you see 
comments like that, uh-huh. I usually just go, oh, that's that's probably just a bot. <laughs> even if, you know, even just if it's like a been very personal name. <laughs> yeah. With the person's channel that has made a bunch of videos of himself. <laughs> the bot knows a lot about that's me. A bot. It's a very cutting it's a, comment. It's but AI. <laughs> Yeah, Benefit that's what I say when people come up in the lobby after a sermon and critique me. You're probably just a bot. <laughs> By the way, what is AI? <laughs> um, okay, so it's a, it's a Gen Z term. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kayla, Kayla can tell us. <laughs> AI says okay, mean so things. Trolls. So trolls, I've learned to just go no. And do you, do you put elves and other <laughs> mythical creatures in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Gimli from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> right. So, so, so he is a great character. <laughs> Yeah, right, Jacob. the best. Yeah, Speaking but... of women's hair. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, wanna, he he comments on your hair. <laughs> those guys saved the world. <laughs> yeah. They all had long hair. Legolas yeah. had long hair. Aragorn had the long hair. The whole Fellowship hair. of the Ring had long hair. Thank That's, you, guys. There you go, that. man. Thank you so much. Gandalf. Yeah, wow. Wow. Gandalf, Dumbledore, a lot of guys have had long hair that have saved the world. So, I mean, I haven't and I won't, but <laughs> others have. <laughs> no, no, we know. No. <laughs> Just want to clarify. Yeah. No. yeah. Okay. So yeah, thanks. Okay. There you go. Yeah, so with the first category with trolls, you just learn to go, nope, I've got too many important things to do with yeah. my life. I'm, I'm not going to yeah. waste your time. Okay, the second category is critics, and this is the tough one, um, yeah. where you're going to get uh, somebody like like this comment that, yeah. that we're talking about here yep. um, who has some, some critique to share with you. Mm-hmm. And the thing about critics is there's always going to be some, some of their own pain, their own thing that they're dealing with. Sure. And at the same time, there's almost always some truth to it. Mm-hmm. And, and so um, this, ta- this is kind of like a, a, it takes time to get to this point and I'm not even great at it, but you can get to the point where you hear critique and you go, okay, I'm not going to let this affect my identity. I know who I am, mm-hmm. but they are pointing out something about a behavior of mine. Mm. Is there some, some truth there? Is there some, some baby with the mm-hmm. bathwater? Yeah. Um, and so the the mistake I think that we make with the critics is there's a pendulum here where we either throw it out completely and yeah. never listen to it, never grow, mm-hmm. or we give it way too much credit and we let yeah. it pull the rug out from under us and then we want to quit. That's a good right? point because a lot of the narrative I think is like, don't listen to the critics, shut out the critics. And there's a good part of that because you don't want them to just ruin your life with worrying what everyone else thinks. But sometimes I think people then don't hear any feedback yeah. in their life. Mm-hmm. And you completely shut that out. We're it's like with this comment, to be. Like, that guy's yeah. actually right in what right. he's saying. Right. And maybe if he offered that to a pastor or somebody that needed to hear it, but came off as a critic, they might be like, let's just not listen to that guy. But it's like, well, right. actually there's something right. true to what they're saying. Right. So that's good. Finding the middle of the pendulum with the critics. Mm-hmm. And that's, okay. that takes a lot of work. It takes community. That's one of the things that the three of us are great at is I, I'll bring a, a critique that I get to you guys mm-hmm. and like, hey, help me help me parse this out. Where's the, the truth in this? Mm-hmm. Where's the stuff I just need to throw out? Um, yeah. uh, the, the Jesus move, the way that Jesus handled that was in conversation, he would always return their question with another question mm. and he would help them dig beneath the surface yeah. and find freedom. And I'm not, we're not at that level. So like on, when I'm at my best, that's what I can do. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But a lot of the times I have to like put that aside for a little bit and you know, yeah, it's a lifelong process of well, learning how to deal with critique. I think it's, there's a good indicator light of uh, if someone says something in a critical nature, if it flares up insecurity in you or defense Ooh. in you, then there probably is some truth to what they're saying. Because when I read that comment, I was like, That's I good. wasn't offended because I was like, well, I do have long hair. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Um, but also, I actually agree with what you're saying. And I think you just don't understand our heart yeah. and didn't take the time to hear it. Right. And so that doesn't offend me. Like that bounces off because yeah. I don't feel like we need to defend ourselves mm-hmm. after the conversation we just had yeah, but when it comes so to good. money like I don't feel like we need to yeah because I, I know that we handle that with integrity mm-hmm. for sure and so but there have been times where someone has critiqued something I've said in a sermon or something and I get real defensive or insecure but mm-hmm. it's because I know that they're kind of right mm-hmm. because yeah. maybe I did say something that wasn't accurate or yeah. I did say something in a way a tone that wasn't the right way to oh, handle dude. something and that is that's useful if you'll let it be useful and in, like information to you you know what right. uh, has been a big one for me over the years is mm-hmm. whenever somebody uh, comes against something I said theologically mm-hmm. or biblically, there would always be a, a lot of like anger and fear that would well up inside me and I'd want to like immediately defend myself. Mm-hmm. And it took me a long time to realize, and I'm still realizing it, that that's because I find a lot of my identity in like being like the, the Bible answer guy mm-hmm. or whatever, right? Instead of just finding my identity and being a son 
of God and, yeah. and being a, mm, yeah. a son who is loved huh. and starting from a place of beloved, I I want to be the guy that always has answers to everybody's questions. So if somebody comes at me for something I said wrong, suddenly I, I feel like my whole world's falling apart. Mm. When in reality, that's not true. And if that's what I'm basing yeah. my identity on, that's a house of cards that, because I say wrong things oh, all the time. Constantly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I try not to. You just said, you just said three wrong things. <laughs> I don't even know what Gen Z's okay now. Words but mean. speak to that from the friend perspective. Yep. So then that third category um, of of realizing like okay, it's so important that we have people in our lives who will mm -hmm. speak truth to us and and speak love speak, speak to us in love, and that's grace and truth. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like one of the things that's happened is as friends, we've like swung the pendulum just to complete grace. And it's like, I'm just going to, whatever is going on in your life, I'm just going to, just going to pump you yeah, up and, that. and that's it. Right. And call that love and call that love when mm -hmm. really the Jesus way to do it is truth, which means you have to have friends in your life who are willing to say no to you sometimes, willing to, to call you out on things, willing to, to help you, you see things in love. There's a great proverb and I'm going to get it wrong. And this is oh, my greatest geez. insecurity. Wow, it's I think okay. it's 27, six. It's okay. It's somewhere in there. Uh, wounds from a friend can be trusted. Bible, okay. Wounds yeah. from a friend can be trusted. And, and so I, I do think there's a, there's something so beautiful about being in community, um, where we can have open and honest conversations. We're like, when I know you guys, when you, when you guys come to me with something, I know you're not coming after my identity. You know, you know who I am. We yeah. love each other. Mm -hmm. You're just going, Hey, but I'm seeing this thing in your life. Let's talk about it. Yeah. And it's right? because it's coming from a standpoint of, I know who you are and this is not that. Good, and I want to. I want you to live the fullness of who God created you to be, right? Good. How that heart hopefully is from a friend. Yeah. Here, this makes me think. There's there's like an aging out. I feel like of being able to be corrected, mm. like having kids right now. Mm. I correct Zeke all the time as his dad. I have to, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's just four years old. Does whatever, right? Yeah. He needs correction. <laughs> um, but I feel like there comes a point, I don't know what age it is, maybe it's once you're 18 or you become an adult or yeah. sometime in there where you just kind of no longer accept that from people. Most people become very defensive and closed off and it's I know best and nobody can correct me anymore. Yeah. And it made, that concept makes me think, hmm. when Jesus says, if you want to inherit the kingdom, you have to become like a child. Part of that maybe means you have to be willing to keep being corrected and adjusted and guided oh. uh, to the life that he has for you because kids are pliable in that way. And they so sometimes good. rebel and fight against it, but they need it and take it because mm -hmm. it's growing them into the people that they're supposed to be. But we kind of like cut that off in our lives. And I think that's why we have so many adults who are still children Dude. deep down. Thoughts? That's, oh, oh yeah. That's so good. And maybe even, I mean, to, in order to grow, you have to be teachable. You have right. to be correctable. Right. Yes. I heard a quote, the day you stop growing, is the day you start dying. Mm. And I'm not talking about like your physical body and your height. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for clarifying that. <laughs> Although I... <laughs> I mean, technically that's maybe true. Yeah. From a biological standpoint. Technically standpoint. from the time you're a minute old, you're kind of starting to die. Yeah, right. So... But we're not... <laughs> To those, the, to those who are no longer getting taller, this is not for you. Dude, you set that up like you have like this like profound thing, even in the way that you said it. And I'm not talking about your height. <laughs> I'm oh, not. I like that. Oh. Keep going, Doug. No, that was my point. <laughs> no, the day you stop growing is the day you, like that's the day you start to get old. Yeah. yeah and so yeah, yeah. it's, I think it's crazy how many 23 year olds there are that are just you're just old now. Seriously, you know what I mean? Old, like, old you're so like, yeah, yeah. rigid in your mind, yeah, yeah, and yeah. there's no agility. There's Dude, no totally. teachability. Yeah. One of the things that we <laughs> say. <laughs> you're good. You're crashing. Go. Okay. <laughs> I'm no, but that even, I, I kind of hit puberty late, so I, was, yeah, I, I grew a little longer than most people do. I was growing into yeah. my 20s, I think. So I, yeah, I I lived longer before I started. Dying. My knees have been hurting recently, so I don't know if I'm about to hit another growth spurt. <laughs> yeah, no, it's because you're, you're dying. Oh, okay. yeah, you maxed out years ago. No, but I'm still teachable. <laughs> well, I hope so, but you're not getting taller. Kayla just taught me a lot of stuff. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, like that's 10 right. minutes ago, you know. Yeah. Oh, none, man. none of it helpful, but <laughs> well, one of the uh, one of our staff values we are humble, and. Um, no matter how good somebody is at something, there's always more to learn about it. 
Yeah. And it's just that teachable spirit. It's hard to work with somebody who thinks they know it all about Correct. a specific lane yes. totally. and can't take feedback <clears throat> and can't yeah. be taught. Um, there's just no youthfulness to that yeah. spirit, you know? Well, and that's why I think we talked a lot about last week, the social wars that happen on Instagram and YouTube right. and stuff like yeah. that is like, <clears throat> how many people are genuinely logging on to that app to go grow in conversation yeah. and right. learn another perspective, right? right? Like yeah. that's not most people's agenda, yeah. ultimately. Dude, I would love to hear more about why that person wants to vote for that person. Right. Because maybe they're seeing something that I don't see. <laughs> I, always, I would love to hear their I perspective. Used to, <laughs> back when you'd post on someone's Facebook wall, yeah. our friend Kelly, I would always, when an election is coming up, hey, who are you voting for? This <laughs> <round>? <laughs> just imagining people, like if someone just said that in like the comments, you know, like as if that would become a conversation where people are like, well, what do you think about their environmental policy? And yeah. like, oh, I hadn't yeah. thought of, like that's not oh, dude, happening. Nobody. Digitally. That. And that's no. that's part of the problem that we were getting at. And that's where the question comes back to like, so how do you navigate that? Because everyone has access to everybody through all these platforms and can say horrible things right. to people. How do you not let that ruin your life when everyone's just criticizing? Like you had a guy once say that he like willed the sins of our congregation a hundredfold onto you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like the hellfire to for everyone should be on your shoulders because so intense. of one yeah. reference you made that he didn't like. Like how that do you? That was tough. That was tough. How do you shut out and realize? <laughs> That's so it heavy. Was tough for you. It was tough. hilarious for us. Yeah, but like, how do you shut that stuff out? But then also yeah. still be teachable and yeah. still hear critique yeah. that you need to hear, and grow and not get stuck in your ways and become the person that can't take any feedback. Yeah, because I think that is a really dangerous place that people get to. Where like, I'm not listening to anyone anymore. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's like, well, then you're gonna only think that you know and you won't learn from somebody else. So how do you live in that tension? I have a few answers for that. Um, first of all, we'd love to hear them. One of the very first times I ever got critiqued from mm -hmm. a sermon was when I was preaching at Young Adults, Red Rocks Young Adults in Denver. And it was like the fourth time I've ever preached. And I probably put 30 hours of prep into it. Yeah. Preached, said amen at the end of the message and thought, okay, like that was actually good. And all the hard work paid off. God showed up. And, and this one young guy, after came up to me and uh, I could just see it in his eyes. He was like, can we go to your office and talk? <laughs> and I said, no, nope. <laughs> we can talk right here if you want. There's so many other people here tonight. Why yeah. would we go up to your office <laughs> yeah, so you could clearly guards, critique me? Security guards around the room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is going to go well. But he just, <laughs> uh, he just, car, let's go be in your office. Yeah. Dude, he just unloaded. He said, and yeah. it was like a lot of like religious language. He said, the spirit, my spirit was fuming towards your spirit mm. the whole time and, yeah. and said mm. a lot of, but then he said, I am a seminary student from Northern California, ah. and I am here in Denver for two weeks to visit and critique churches. Oh, yeah. Connor and Super I wrote a helpful. fake letter from him to you. <laughs> you did. I remember that. A few days <laughs> later. Awesome. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. Yeah. <laughs> when it was still a wound. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Way, to heal it. Way yeah. too soon. <laughs> we were trying to heal the wound. Yeah. 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 Wounds from a friend, you know? That's right. Yeah. Um, You're welcome. For me and Connor. But it messed with me. Yeah. I was angry mm -hmm. and, and also just hurt. I remember driving home that night thinking, I can't try harder than I just tried. Mm -hmm. And if that's not good enough yeah. for, for this guy, yeah. then I'll never be good enough. I remember calling you mm -hmm. and you let me vent, which was very, very needed. Sometimes you need to vent for the sake of releasing. And, and then you told me, um, you said, dude, let me remind you, there's a behavior behind every backstory or there's a backstory behind every behavior. You said, I promise you, he has a professor at his seminary who is discipling him yep. to become what he has become so far. Mm. And that's not his fault. Mm. And you unfortunately received the, the punch in the face and got a black eye because of it. But you need to Yes, is he wrong for doing that? Absolutely. But say a prayer for him. Yeah. Because That's he good. is it's being so discipled good, and he doesn't even know it. And then I remember the very next day, my friend Chad, who's been doing this for longer than than us and has so much good advice all the time, he said, um, he said, Welcome to the club. Mm -hmm. He said, It's a good club. It's yeah. a good club to be in where you get critique because you stand for something. Mm. He said, 
the goal by the end of your life is that decades from now, you will have very thick skin mm -hmm. and be tough to offend. Yeah. But also at the same time, you will have a very soft heart that still loves people mm -hmm. and is not jaded by them. And you will only finish your life with thick skin and a soft heart if you do that on purpose. Wow. Because especially in our day and age, full yeah. of critique <clears throat> and full of the... Oh, yeah. So many just like yeah. mean things. The deepest corners of hell are reserved for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. The Jeez. only way you, you get to the end of your life and you still not Mistakes. just love people, but really like dearly like, like people. Them. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're tougher to offend with thick skin. You have to do that on purpose. Have you to. have to respond the correct way mm -hmm. to yeah. criticism. And that's, yeah. that's the Jesus way because the first reaction, you know, when someone brings a critique like this, oh, I don't think you know my heart. And it's easy to stop it there than rather go, but I also don't know your heart and I'm going to yeah. figure out why you are responding in that. That's, that's really good. good. You know? Yeah. And that's, that's really I've always thought like one of the most powerful things Jesus ever said is when he said nothing. Mm -hmm. He said nothing to defend himself. Mm -hmm. Said Because he knew he wasn't in the wrong. Mm -hmm. He knew that there were lies being said about him and he was fully confident in the path and plan that was laid out for him that he was just going to do what he was going to do and he didn't need to go fight anybody. Right. about it right so i think that is the ultimate jesus way but i think that there he also corrected people at times mm. and he knew in relationship how to do that really well yeah. um specifically with the disciples you know pull a guy aside and be like hey man you're wrong on this yeah get mm -hmm. behind me satan like dude you yeah. don't actually know what you're talking about and sometimes there's a place for that i remember a, a girl came and confronted me in the lobby after a sermon uh while i was holding Zeke, who was two at the time, just got him okay. out of kids, and then yeah. she just came for me. Uh -huh. And uh, had her, something in my sermon, the way I'd said it, she took as really awful and couldn't get past it and all that. And I heard what she said, and I realized in the conversation, like, yeah, I probably could have said that in a better way. Um, you, and I explained my heart behind why I said that. I don't remember exactly the details. I'm not trying to be vague. But I remember realizing that there's church baggage in your backstory. There's a pastor in your backstory, and I just to be very Gen Z triggered that. Mm -hmm. um, and I said that to her, I said, hey, you know what? What I hear from what you're saying is I actually think this is a lot deeper of a thing than just what I said in my sermon. Yeah. And I'm sorry for what your church baggage is in your background, but I, I actually think that you have some reckoning you need to do mm -hmm. in healing in that because mm -hmm. it's not actually fair for you to throw all of that onto whichever Good. church you go to, right. and whatever pastor's preaching, right. you, you have some journeying to do with that. Yeah. And I want to, you know, I want, that to happen for you. Yeah. I think people do need to hear some of that feedback sometimes. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I remember, I think it, maybe it was Wendy's. It was one of the, like a Twitter account for Wendy's or one of those restaurants that they just had somebody running it that would just go after trolls and just call them out on things they said. <laughs> and it was so refreshing. It went like yeah. viral for a little bit because yeah. everyone was like, good for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like this person's just berating some cashier. And so they'd be like, actually, here's a little bit about this person, you know, and stuff yeah. like that, which is kind of needed in some way. Yeah, for sure. Because everyone has the right to free speech and that's yeah. great. Yeah. But it gives everyone f this feeling of authority and autonomy in everyone else's life that they mm -hmm. don't have. Mm -hmm. And that's where I would stop people sometimes and go, hey, who asked you to be the watchdog for this? Totally. Right. Who licensed you? Who, who decided you needed to be? And the most dangerous place I see that is in the church. Oh, 100%. Where I go, you are claiming to be God's watchdog. Hmm? Did he ask you to do that? Did he call you to go travel to different churches and just rip into the yeah. pastors at those places that are giving their lives to this? Is that a godly calling or did you decide that and you're stamping God on that to make mm -hmm. it sound like it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's a place for a yeah. need for conversation around this. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to talk about this today. Turn it in the whole episode, but that's great. Because I think people need to be held accountable to some of the opinions that we just thought there. Because some of the Dude. biggest opinions I've ever had in my life, I regret sharing with some people because I was wrong. Yeah. I didn't actually yeah. know what I was talking about. Yeah, right. I didn't know the full picture, but I thought I did in that moment. Mm -hmm. And you got to learn that lesson. And sometimes you need to help call people out to understand. And that phrase you just said, I was wrong goes so far you preach about this all the time mm -hmm. like we we're finite humans trying to figure out such a complicated world yeah. and an infinite god yep. like we're going to get things wrong yeah. but that that um that feeling of feeling like, like we can never be wrong just makes us double down on whatever narrative yeah. we yeah. have yeah um and there's so much freedom that's found when you just go oh actually i was wrong about that thing or waking up today going 
I'm going to do my best to, to study and learn more about God, but I, I'm positive there are some things that I'm, I've gotten wrong. Yeah. And so I'm yeah. open to letting the word of God speak to me uh, yeah. about those yeah. things. I'm not going to make, I'm going to let God make me in his image instead of yeah. trying I to make him in N.T. my image. Right? N.T. Wright's a professor mm-hmm. and he starts every class he teaches by saying 20% of what I'm going to teach you this semester is wrong. Mm. Mm. And he says, I wish I could tell you what 20% it yeah. is, but I don't know. Wow. That's it. N.T. Wright. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. All of us <clears throat> believe something about God that's wrong. Yeah. Like, are you completely wrong? No. You've got something wrong and not different. Yeah. Wrong. Wow. Well, mm-hmm. It's like, well, I choose to see God this way. I remember Judah Smith saying, if God doesn't want to be seen that way, you don't get to see him that way. Right. Yeah. It's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> right. Every every Christian, mm-hmm. um, every pastor, every author, every theologian, every commenter, our commenter from this past week believes mm-hmm. stuff about God, the creator of the universe, mm-hmm. that is wrong. Right. Mm-hmm. Not just different from us, but wrong, just like me. And if you can approach a comment section and you can bring critique with the humility that understands I'm wrong about some stuff. Yeah. That's so You're going to present it with the right spirit that is actually going to lead to fruit. Because yeah. I would argue for most critiquers, is your goal, is your main goal out of this to actually see change? And see, is that the fruit? Or do you want to make a point and, and be heard? Yeah. yeah. Because that is actually a very selfish motive. Mm-hmm. It doesn't lead to anything being changed. It just, it feels good because you got them even though you are wrong about some stuff, a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. yeah, just like everybody else. Yeah. And if everybody can enter the arena with that sort of humility and be teachable, mm-hmm. then we can get somewhere and have great yeah. conversations. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. I think uh, the world's always gonna be this way. There's always mm-hmm. gonna be trolls. There's always gonna be critics. Yeah. Um, that's human nature, negativity, sure. bias. All of it, yeah. All of that. For Christians, yeah, and as a pastor, yeah, that's where I think there needs to be a call out mm. of, hey, but you're called to operate differently, right? You are called to build, yeah. And too many of us are tearing down. How many YouTube accounts are there of these guys that are like, oh, I'm going to give you my opinion on this oh, pastor dude. scandal or whatever? It's like, dude, you don't even know that church or that guy. You don't even have any oh, tie to man. this. But you, and get- it's really easy to spout off your opinion on that and trash this thing and maybe you're right about something somebody did wrong but and what it's, what is really what is happening here it's really easy to to say this is obviously yeah. my calling because i'm getting a lot of clicks yeah yeah you're getting a lot of clicks because that's red meat for the flesh oh totally oh dude the yeah. dudes have been doing that for for decades yeah, that's yeah. A, i think it, it makes me sad when i see christians latch onto that and yeah. jesus said you'll know my disciples by their well the, the love not by their opinions yeah even that they're right about uh-huh. right yeah and too mm. much do we tear each other down and trash each other yeah. and destroy when we're called to build and look different in how we do that in relationship. Yeah, and so that like, That's so there's going to be trolls out there, whatever. But like, if you're a follower of Jesus, That's you are, it. you are called to steward these platforms differently. Mm-hmm. And to, if you don't know the heart or if you don't, haven't sought that relationship, then don't say anything. Right. Very simple. Yeah. Then right. you don't need to do that. Um, too many opinions and people trashing places that they have no involvement in, no tie to, yeah. no relationship with. Mm-hmm. And then, but feeling good about it, feeling like, well, I said the oh, right yeah. thing or I said my piece. And I, I think sadly, the world then looks from the outside of that and goes, you're no different than us. What, why would yeah. I wanna be a Christian? Why would I follow Jesus with you guys? You guys don't love each other. No. You guys don't build each other up. You don't <laughs> seek to know the deeper story or get to know the heart behind <laughs> these things. Like, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah, just yeah, like yeah. us. And so, so ultimately good, comes to the Jesus way of yeah. doing it through relationship. And yeah. there is a need for that call out. There's a need for correction. Yeah. There's a need for the church to be corrected and pastors to be corrected because we're imperfect and we make mistakes and the yeah. church has done a lot of bad things and pastors mm-hmm. have mishandled a lot of things for sure. But it should be done in relationship. So trolls, yeah. critics, and friends. Yeah, and man. how do you operate as a friend who's mm-hmm. willing to say the hard thing, and the, but the true mm-hmm. thing, but do it in a relationship of mm-hmm. love? That's it. That's the mm-hmm. question. All right. So or the answer good. to the question. Yeah. That's so good, man. I remember, um, how are we doing on time? Okay. I remember uh, a few weeks ago. Just just getting started. Locking up. Locking Leave up no the crumbs, church. dude. Nice. Yeah. Let's call back. So was, yeah, uh, no, a little bit of context <laughs> on our front doors, <laughs> on our front doors to the church. <laughs> yeah. They don't oh, really yeah. lock. So yeah. we have to, we bought some chains from Home Depot to chain them up on the inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because we don't want to 
lose all of our stuff. Yeah, <laughs> people try to break into this building all the time. All yeah. the time. Because they want to come onto this very expensive podcast set oh, yeah, and dude. steal yeah. all of our <laughs> go- bars of gold. Somebody already, already stole our ceiling. This entire thing is made okay. of Bitcoin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we had just had like the most amazing two days of church. And that Sunday morning was two services. Like 50 people gave their lives to Jesus. There was transformation. There was hope. There was encouragement. There was challenge. And I was having a great convo in the lobby. And we had just put the chains back on the door because everybody's got to go home. And uh, um, Wade, our production guy, had ordered some Taco Bell. And a guy was like Uber Eats delivering it to or Grubhub or whatever it was. And so he showed up and knocked on the door. And I ran over and I had to undo the chain, which took about just like 15 seconds and opened it. And I said, hey, sorry, man. Thanks for being patient. Who's this for? And all he did was hand me the bag of Taco Bell. And he said, a church with chains on the door on Sunday. Really cool. (laughs) And just walked away. (laughs) The most condescending tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was just like, (laughs) jeez. That's all you had to say? I was like, you know nothing of the (laughs) context of this. Dude. Dude. Probably thinking... Yeah, a church that's all about itself, chaining up the doors, keeping everybody out. I'm like, well, first of all, (laughs) the reason we have chains is because we couldn't buy new doors because we just gave the money to these nonprofit organizations. (laughs) What did you do this week, by the way? (laughs) And second, this is our... We got to go home, man. Like, we already had church. It just ended. We've had... There has to be a point... people break into this building. Yeah. We had to secure everything. I was like, that was such an example of... Dude. Obviously, there's a backstory. Obviously, he's yeah, yeah. been hurt, and he has this narrative yeah. that yeah. the church is a specific way, yeah. Yeah. but had no interest in a conversation or a dialogue. Yeah. He's, he noticed one little thing that seemed to affirm the narrative mm. he already had, mm. and he settled for that oh, level dude. of living that day. Yeah, subconsciously, he went, perfect. I'm yeah. going to hone in on that, yeah, and yeah. that's going to allow me to stay bitter as I get in my car and drive yeah. from here, right? Yeah. Yep. And that is, in essence what we're what we were talking about over the last <laughs> few weeks here yeah, is yeah. don't don't stop at that point yeah is do the hard work to go okay but where is that coming from yeah where is the anger coming from where is the bitterness coming from let's totally. let's go down the ladder to use ethan's yes. illustration yes. and figure out what's really going on yeah down there because if he had taken the time to to realize oh this is actually like a really cool church that's making heaven more crowded and lives are being changed and yeah. they have a chain on the door at the end of the day when they go home. Like it could have turned into this like really cool conversation, yeah. Yeah. but instead he just stopped it right there. Yeah. Agreed. It reminds me of, uh, I remember being at dinner one night with a group of people and um, it came up like pastors getting critiqued and they were talking about Sean and Chad up in Denver at the time who were teaching and taking all kinds of critique and stuff from people. And uh, one of the ladies at the dinner, she like got tears in her eyes and she was like, I just, I just feel be- so bad for them because I know like all those guys are trying to do is just try so hard to help people to know God. Like that's all they're trying to do. And like, it meant a lot like as yeah. somebody in ministry, but I would just yeah. say that to people in general about the people that you critique so often, especially like trying to do good things. It's like, they're probably really just trying really hard and uh-huh. they make mistakes along the way. But if right. you could just stop and think about their motive behind yeah. that and find the heart of the person, yeah. you would realize that it's probably not as, Probably not what you think. Yeah. Right. And maybe we could all get a little bit better at that. Yeah. No yeah. more trolls. That's it, man. So I think obviously there is a place, there there has to be for critique. But I think the the question to ask yourself, so how do we critique critique to answer your original question? Because mm-hmm. um, it is necessary. Yeah. Is what is your motive and what is your end game with it? Is it because good. you want to see good fruit and change happen? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or are you just trying to be heard and make a point? Mm-hmm. Um and if you're just trying to be heard and make a point, let that be a mirror that you got some healing to do and this is more yeah. about you than it is about that. Um, that's why hopefully this conversation was the first motive. I hope so. Yeah. The first motive of trying to critique, critique, to see changes in the arena of critique. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's yeah. what, because it needs to be there and mm-hmm. it's healthy to be yeah. there. Yeah. Um, but it would be, yeah, it's just gotten out of control in Dude. a negative way. And yeah. if we could redeem it a little bit, because yeah. critique doesn't need to be thrown out. No. It needs to be redeemed yeah. there you go. and brought back to what it was originally meant yeah. for. It's almost like the line is critique better. 
Like if you could just yeah. get that saying in your mind as soon as you're about to to say something to somebody or write something, if you just stopped and said, "No, how could I critique better? Yeah, here? yeah. how could I how could I get uh, how could I enter into a relationship and a friendship and and get to the point where I can critique this mm. in a helpful way that will actually lead to to fruit? I think that would be really good for our world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's critique better. What's, what's that quote that's like be kind or gentle? With your words, because yeah. you don't know the battle that somebody else is fighting. Yeah, because everybody's like fat, fighting Be a battle. Kind. Yeah, for everybody's fighting a battle you don't know about. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if people had that mentality, mm -hmm. um, yeah. the question then would be like, okay, well, if you do have something to say of a critique, like, are you willing to enter into that battle with that person yeah. alongside them? That's right. so you know, good. will yeah. you? Because if you're not, then don't you don't need to harp on them. You know, don't need to come at them because and you just want to just going to make their battle harder. Yeah, that they're already yeah. and everyone's fighting one yeah. in their own way. Like your hair, you're clearly fighting a battle. Oh, oh dude. Do I cut it? Do I not? <laughs> uh, and what are you trying to... I'll announce trying in the to, next episode. Yeah, what yeah. are you trying to prove, man? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I have a lot to think about now. <laughs> do, you, do you know your, what your identity would be if you didn't have... Oh, no. The women's hair. I don't think I would have an identity. <laughs> it wouldn't be anyone. <laughs> no. We'll see. We'll see what I do, That's guys. It. We'll yeah. do a big press release. But that, that could have been a cool conversation <laughs> Yeah, if it... I would say critique better next time. Critique better next time. Yeah. Yeah. Critique yeah. in a fruitful way. In a fruitful way yeah. of relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, uh, I recommend people listen to your recent sermon. We don't have time to dive into <laughs> yeah, it. Good but job. Great. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. We forgot we to Talked do about that. peace, which is very needed in this whole yeah. thing. And when you find that peace <laughs> in the Prince of Peace, <laughs> that's a different way of living. And that allows yeah. a lot of those things to bounce off you. And that's it allows right. you to be vulnerable and humble enough to hear yeah. critique because you're at peace with ultimately who you are in Him. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. There you go. Great job. Great sermon, Doug. Uh, we'll, Great recap of the message. We'll, we'll yeah. get into uh, some more Christmas fun. Ah, uh, Christmas time. Next time, maybe Kay will have some Christmas games or gags. Ooh. Sure. Games or gags. And we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Be back for episode 19. Uh -huh. Share this with your friends. To help them to critique better. Critique better. Critique better. Doug, you want to sign off with saying peace since you preached about it? Peace out from me and a couple of boomers. <laughs> <laughs>